let me just make sure that, 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 that I'm accurate. How many of you have been going through over these last seven days? Just wave at me. There's been something that you've been going through in your mind, something in your relationship. Just wave at me. I want to make sure that, that, that I'm speaking what I believe was on the heart of Father God. That's why you had to press your way this morning to be in the presence of the Lord. There is a transfer that happens when we enter into his presence. And this is why in the first testament only a select few could enter into the presence of the lord but as we come into the understanding and the revelation of the second testament we understand that we can all enter into his presence but on this morning and nikita is very interesting that you hear this morning because i was thinking about you the other day but on this morning god bless you as we enter into god's presence there is an exchange that's going to happen even the more there is some transformation that is going to occur even the more because of god's presence listen repeat after me not by power, not by power. nor by strength, nor by strength. But, by but by his spirit not by power, not by power. Nor, by nor by strength but by his spirit, spirit. save the lord not by power nor by strength but by his spirit save the Lord I need you to make that declaration not only today but over these next seven days that you can know that you are walking in the authority of the word of the Lord Jesus Christ not by power nor by strength but by his spirit it's by his spirit that every yoke is broken it's by his spirit amen that you can walk on the uh, on the serpent and on the scorpion it's by his spirit that you're coming out of this hallelujah hallelujah listen let's go let's go to the word i'm excited today amen as we come to celebrate pentecost sunday and as you're getting to whether it's your bible or your app whatever you're going to use Go with me to Luke chapter 22, verse number 31. And because it is the gospel, please stand, amen, for the reading of his word. That is Luke chapter number 22, verse number 31. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And then we're going to go over to Acts chapter 2. Verse 12, Luke 22, verse number 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And then when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Acts chapter 2, verse number 12. So they were all perplexed and amazed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. Verse number 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Before you take your seat, you don't even have to talk to your neighbor, but I do want you to look at me and answer this question. The second part, the burden of Pentecost, will you be the one? The burden of Pentecost, will you be the one? You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. So often when we preach and teach about the day of Pentecost, we come out of Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. 
and we know what it says. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Say one accord, one place. Uh-huh. And then it says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And again, we teach and preach about Pentecost, and we teach and preach about being in one place and being on one accord, and yet we forget about the mockery that would soon accompany the day of celebration. We forget about the behavior of the one. It was Peter who stood up in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 14 and began to speak to the people. But if we begin to look back at the Gospels, we see that it was Peter who denied Jesus three times. It was Peter who drew his sword and cut the ear of a servant of a high priest off. It was Peter who was found naked fishing. It was Peter who could cuss like a sailor. But yet in all of this, God still chose him. Yet in all of this, he was still called a rock. Yet in all of this, it was still God that knew his ending. Amen. At the beginning. And I want to tell many of you this morning that is listening to me that you are just like Peter. In the last season, you could cuss like a sailor. In the last season, you could pull that sword and ready to cut the ear of the enemy off. In the last season, you were denying in individuals time after time but I want you to know that on today that a change is here I want you to know that on today that you are no longer going to be called the names you used to be called you are no longer going to behave how you used to behave but because of what God is doing you're going to begin to walk differently you're going to begin to talk differently you're going to begin to be all that God has called you to be and be that now hallelujah hallelujah now understand this we still celebrate and recognize pentecost without the full understanding of the sacrifice of what has occurred and what is yet to occur not only not only is this a finished work it is a complete work say that with me this is a finished work this is a complete work understand this it is finished it is completed yet it is still happening at the same time it is finished it is completed but yet it is still happening at the same time being finished and being completed are not always synonymous with one another Many of us finish things, but those things are not always completed. My eight-hour shift is over, and I'm about to clock out, but yet there's still some work that needs to be done. I finished the email, but I did not completely read the email in its entirety. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, say in me, say in me shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So understand, it is finished, it is completed, yet it is still happening at the same time. Uh-huh. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus was and is and is to come at the same time. Healing was and is and will be at the same time. Deliverance was and is and is to come at the same time. I want you to know on this morning that what you are looking for and what you are waiting on, you already have, yet you are discovering it at the same time. What you are looking for and what you are waiting for, you already have discovered it, yet you're waiting on it in this moment. Ah, yeah, we are in the middle of what was and what is yet to become. The Bible says it like this in 1 Kings 18 and 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? Uh, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, not a word. Many of you are struggling because you are around a people that are silently confused. 
silently faltering between two opinions. Yet you are the one that will stand up and speak out. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm still the one. Come on, look at yourself and say, self, you are still the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are still the one. Yeah, we are still the one. Uh, many of us also have to understand what the Feast of Weeks and the Day of Pentecost really, what it really is. The name Feast of Weeks was given because God commanded the Jews in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 and 16, to count seven full weeks. Say seven full weeks. Beginning on the second day of Passover and then present offerings, someone say offerings, of new grain uh -huh, to the Lord as a lasting ordinance. See, the term of Pentecost derives from the Greek word meaning 50. Listen, I'm going somewhere this morning. The priest had to present an offering and sacrifice before the Lord. Many of you, amen, for the last 49 days, you are going through the place of sacrifice and you had no idea. I asked you earlier how many of you have went through over these last seven days. But if we can do another assessment and look over these last seven weeks, how many of you can say that you have went through these last seven weeks? It's been trial after trial, tribulation after tribulation, temptation after temptation, confusion after confusion. Amen. Money was funny, but yet you still present yourself before the Lord. Relationship was rocky, but you still presented yourself before the Lord. Going back and forth and going even into some old habits, but yet you still presented yourself before the Lord. There is something, Elder Doman, about when the sons and the daughters of God present themselves before the Lord for him to do something. And I don't know who this is for on today, but I want you to be, uh, be reminded that God is doing something for you because you are in his presence. He is changing you because you are in his presence he is transforming you because you did not think it a robbery to avail yourselves before the Lord hallelujah come on someone say it's still my time and I'm still the one now let's be honest and let's talk about the burden of Pentecost uh-huh and this may just be me and that's okay if it is but sometimes I don't like amen some of the things that I have to do in life there are some things that I just don't want to do I don't want to have certain conversations I don't want to go to certain places I don't want to face certain people but when I understand that it's not about me but it's about the God or the Christ in me that gives me the strength to do it I begin to be obedient and do what he has called me to do sometimes I can't encourage everybody else because I'm encouraging myself Pastor Richard Sometimes I can't pray for everybody else because I'm praying for myself. Sometimes I can't walk with you the extra mile because I need someone to walk the second mile with me. Is there any witnesses this morning? Does anyone know what it's like to be in that situation? Does anyone know what it's like to give it your all and you still feel like that's not enough? Yeah, amen, but on this morning, the Holy Spirit is here to meet you. On this morning, the Holy Spirit is here to guide you and to take you the rest of the way. Yeah, and understand this, that this is the moment that we give ourselves to the Lord. He also begins to give us reconciliation. He gives us restoration. He gives us a recompense, and he gives us results. I'm going to say that again. The moment we give ourselves to the Lord, he gives us reconciliation. He gives us restoration. He gives us a recompense, and he gives us results. So that means I'm about to get paid back for what I sowed in the last season. Amen. The Bible says those that have sown in tears, you shall reap with a harvest. And this is going to be a harvest of joy for you. This is going to be a harvest of thanksgiving for you. This is going to be a harvest of abundance for you. All because of what God has promised and said and prepared for you. Come on, say, I am the one. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care about the enemy in my life. I am still the one. Yeah, yeah, 
They were around Peter when you began to pull your sword. They were around when you began to smoke. They were around when you began to drink. They were around when you sold the drugs. They were around when you were sleeping with that merry man or sleeping with that merry woman. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So in other ways, and then another understanding is, I'm not what I used to do. I am not who I used to be. Yeah, yeah, I am not going where I used to go. What was, was, but what is, is to come. What was, was, but what is, is still to come. What you're looking at right now is complete, it's finished, but yet it's still happening at the same time. It is complete, it's finished, and it's happening at the same time. So in other words, I am delivered, I was delivered, and I will be delivered at the same time. I was healed, I am healed, and I will be healed at the exact same time. Look at somebody and let somebody know, I'm coming through this thing. I'm coming through this sickness. I'm coming through this divorce. I'm coming through this circumstance. I'm coming through yeah 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 hallelujah hallelujah the last 49 days you struggled one thing after another it was almost like like life was being choked out of you it was like the enemy had his his knee on your neck but listen listen you can speak to the enemy you can speak to the circumstance. You can speak to the situation and let the circumstance and the situation know that it no longer has you. Let the circumstance and the situation know it can no longer conquer you, but you are conquering it. Let the circumstance and the situation know it can no longer bother you, but you're coming after it and you're coming after it with a vengeance. Let your addiction know it will no longer conquer you, but you will conquer it and you're coming for it with a vengeance. Let everything that knows about what it was that you're coming back to recover it all. Reconciliation, restoration, recompense, and results. The burden of Pentecost, I am still the one. Yeah, you have to know, Sister Helen, that you're still the one. The situation came, Sister Karen, to take you out. It came that you would throw in the towel, but you understood what it was like. And you said, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. You understood what it was like. They said, the greater is he. Amen. That's in me. And the reason why I keep on saying that over and over again is because many of us struggle with identity. We struggle with identity. And if we struggle with identity in the natural, understand you also struggle with identity in the spiritual. How can you know that you're more than a conqueror in the spirit, but you're walking around very timid? You're walking around afraid. You're walking around scared. Yeah. But greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And the moment that I begin to shake off what it was, I begin to embrace what is. Yeah. During these last 49 days, there were distractions. There was a lack of money. There was mockery. This is my testimony. There was forgiveness that needed to happen. There was reconciliation that needed to happen. But not realizing that during these last 49 days, God was trying to get your attention. All along, Peter, he was trying to get your attention. Peter was a mess, but he stood by Jesus. Peter was a mess. But Jesus stood by him. Don't allow the messiness of your situation to remove you from being close to Jesus Christ. Don't let the messiness of your circumstance remove you from being close to Jesus Christ. Because when we draw nigh to him, come on somebody, he draws nigh to us. When we cast our cares upon him, he picks up our care and he takes it with him all along the way. Yeah. 
Yeah, listen, people of God, the environment is conducive and it's subject to the prophet. But if you don't realize the prophetic oil that is on your life, you will stay in a season or a moment longer than you should. When you don't understand the prophetic oil that's on your life, you will continue to fight and argue with that Jezebel longer than you're supposed to. You will stay in the relationship longer than you need to. You will continue to pick up that bottle longer than you need to because you don't realize and recognize the oil that's on your life. Come on, someone said there's oil on my life. Amen. Because there's oil on your life. Amen. You're going to begin to walk and you're going to begin to move like you have never walked and moved before. Amen. I came this morning with a vengeance. Amen. I came this morning to let everybody know and let the enemy know that we are walking in the goodness and in the glory of God. I'm going to say it again. We're walking in the goodness and in the glory of God. There is something that's coming out of my last season. There is something that's coming out of my last 49 days. Yeah, I wasn't there when he walked out on you. I wasn't there when your dad left your mom. I wasn't there when your mom hit your dad. I wasn't there when they tried to fight you and jump you. No, I wasn't there. But someone say what Jesus was. Say what Jesus was. Yeah, he is a defense. He is a rock. He is a refuge. And the more that we understand that Jesus was there, you'll realize that that's why you made it through and you're here on today. You realize that it could have been the other way. You realize it should have been the other way. You realize that you should have had a black eye. You realize you should have been in the hospital. You realize what you should have been drugged through. But thanks be unto God that gave you the victory. But thanks be unto God that allows you to realize that you have come out and you come out stronger than your one in. You came out bolder than your one in. You came out understanding that you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I need someone to put that in the atmosphere. I'm going to make it. I need someone to type that on social media. I'm going to make it. And the reason you're going to make it is because God is with you. The reason why you're going to make it is because God is for you. The reason why you're going to make it is because he made a way out of no way. The reason why you're going to make it is because Jesus Christ, he went to the cross once and for all. Because Jesus Christ is not going to leave you where you were, but he's going to pick you up. He's going to dust you off, and he's going to set your feet on a solid rock. Someone say solid rock. Someone say solid rock. That means I'm going to walk now in stability. I'm going to walk now in an integrity. I'm going to walk now in confidence because I'm walking in Jesus. The burden of Pentecost. I am still the one. I am still the one. I am still the one. I know, I know you've been going through. I know there's been death. I know there's been turmoil. I know you wanted to walk away, but you're here on today. I know you didn't want this relationship. I know you didn't want that debt, but you're here on today. And because you're here on today, you can declare over everything and over everyone that you are still the one. You can declare over everything, Mike, and everyone that you have made it. I know you're making it even on fragmented pieces. I know you're making it even in a broken space, but even a broken crayon can still color. Yeah. I may be broken, but I'm not forgotten. I may be broken, but I'm not by myself. I may be broken, but I'm here on today because of God. Come on, someone say grace. grace. Come on, someone say grace. grace. Yeah, hallelujah. I have prophetic oil and utterance on my life. You have prophetic oil and utterance on your life. There are some things that won't happen until I begin to speak. 
gone are the days that we sat in timidity, that we sat in, in, in intimidation, that we sat in insecurity. But it is now time to rise up and be what God has called you to be and to be that now. Amen. Not only is there a gift on the inside of you, but also you are the gift. Uh-huh. Be reminded of what the conversation was between Paul and Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse number 6 it says therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for God has not given you a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind I do need you to help me now I want you to put your hand on the shoulder of the person that you're sitting beside and let them know that they need to stir up the gift of God which is on the inside of them let them know that this is a time for the prophetic oil for the healing for the deliverance for the way to be stirred up and to be birthed out of them let them know that they are the head and not the tail above and not beneath let them know that they're gonna make it and they're gonna make it because of Christ Jesus oh I don't think you hear me this morning you need to let them know that they're gonna make it you need to let them know to stir up the gift 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 apostles stir up the gift prophets stir up the gift evangelists stir up the gift pastors stir up the gift teachers stir up the gift hallelujah hallelujah because you are the one hallelujah hallelujah yesterday is gone and today is mine hallelujah yesterday was and today is and i am still the one there was a song that said jesus i'll never forget what you've done for me jesus i'll never forget how you set me free jesus i'll never forget how you brought me out jesus i'll never forget no never and many of us tanisha we need to be reminded of that on today that we won't forget about what jesus christ has done that we won't forget that it was finished it is completed and it will be at the same time in our text in Luke chapter 22, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Apostle, I have questions. I have questions, Anita. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you. When did Satan ask for Peter? The text doesn't record that. Why did Satan ask for Peter? And what did Peter possess that Satan was after? Many of us in the room are just like Peter. Why did Satan ask for Sharon? Why did Satan ask for Tico? What did Anita have or possess that Satan was after? And the more that we begin to ask those conversations and ask those questions, he comes back with a response. He comes back and he lets us know through his word. Number one, that your assignment and your responsibilities will reflect the results of the anointing that's on your life. Your assignment and responsibilities will reflect the results of the anointing that's on your life. Isaiah chapter 61, for the spirit of the Lord God is what? Upon me. He has anointed me. So once you realize that you are anointed, you will realize that God has prepared you and anointed you even for this. You know, we say that I'm equipped for every good work. Now, others 
They will not be able to comprehend and understand the anointing that's on your life, but it's not for them to. Number two, here in the text, in Luke 22, Jesus himself prayed for Peter. Jesus himself prayed for you, Anita. Jesus himself prayed for you, uh, Tia. Jesus himself, he prayed for you. Uh huh. And understand this. Not only has he prayed for you, but he looked beyond your faults and saw all of your needs. The song says, I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary. And the more that we understand that we need to lift our eyes to Calvary, we look at what the sacrifice was in Jesus Christ. And then the third point, we see it here. The Bible teaches us to cast our cares upon him. Because your brothers or the brethren is depending on you. Jesus says here, Matthew number 11, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. The burden of Pentecost is for a transformed world. 3,000 people were saved as a result of the day of Pentecost. Not only were they saved, but they were baptized. There is a people that is waiting on you to experience Pentecost. That they can be saved. And they can be baptized. And you are the one. He wants them to know that there is deliverance. Yeah, there will be some individuals that's going to mock you. They're going to talk about you. One thing that these last 49 days have taught me is to walk in the integrity of my heart. And when you begin to walk in the integrity of your heart, you understand. Yes, Lord. That is not about what they're saying about you. But it's about you walking the anointing and the oil that he has placed on the inside of you. Come on, everyone stand. Listen. There is a real enemy. There is. And the real enemy does want to sift you. But Jesus has prayed for you that your faith would not fail. Stand still. How many of you received this word on today by a show of hands? 